Hi, I'm Connie from Prosperity Finance, sharing the best financial tips so that you can be more successful with achieving your financial goals. Now, recently we had some inquiries about changing the ownership of the property. One of the example is where the wife um, own a property and she used to have a good income, but because um, she has a family right now and she works less hours, and as a result, um, her income has reduced. Now, the wife wants to refinance to improve her loan structure, but she can't do it on her own. But with her husband's income, it's going to be fine. Now, the only challenge is the property actually owned under her own name. The bank doesn't allow uh, the title stay under her own name while the borrower is joint personal names. So in this case, we refer clients to our uh, long-term referral partner, uh, Jai Yuan. Uh, Jai is a senior solicitor at uh, Turner uh, Hopkins. Now she used to be on our show as well to give us some lot of uh, legal insights. There's other occasions uh, people need to change the title, for example, transfer existing property to another entity, etc. So it's all come down to change the property ownership. Today, I'm really lucky to invite Jai Yuan. Firstly, let's welcome Jai. Hello, Jai. Hello, Connie. Thank you for the invite. Thank you for coming to this um, uh, episode. So I just would like you to uh, share with us. So when uh, a property needs to change ownership, uh, what is the process and what do you do from um, the legal perspective? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Tony. Uh, so first of all, we often, we often get inquiries from clients asking um, change of the ownership names. And in fact, some people may think it's just a very simple job. Um, do an application and while well, like, I can be changed. But in fact, the legal process involved is um, more than that. Usually the first question we will ask clients is why? Um, what's the reason of the change name? And um, the most common reasons we found is selling and purchasing properties. Of course, it will, you know, it will involve changing names. Selling the property you know, from the joint names, personal names to funds or to their companies. These transactions also involving um, change of names. Apart from the sale of purchase, um, when, the, when the people want to, you know, they can also apply for correct, correction of name and um, change name due to change of their legal names. So we can do all those applications. Other big category is people just simply want to remove or add one more person to the title. So what is the legal process for that? Just like the example that Connie just shared with us, you know, the properties and, and the wife's name and they want to transfer into the joint name. So um, in this circumstance, the legal base really it will be the sale and purchase agreement. And the, the sale and purchase agreement in place allow the wife as the vendor can sell the property to the wife and husband um, as the purchasers. Of course, the purchase price will be then the market price. But through that legal base, it allowed the basis you know, for the transfer to take place. The wife and husband as the purchaser, of course, need to, you know, contact Connie, arrange their finance in their joint names to enable the transfer and settlement to take place. In terms of the equity, um, you know, the equity for the property or the deposit of the will call can be dealt by other legal documentation, such as deed of gifting or deed of forgiveness of debt. So the lawyers will help prepare these legal documentations to ensure the transfer can go smoothly. But in fact, you can also see it as a sale and a purchase. Great, thank you, Joy. Um, so what other um, situations that uh, involve uh, changing names? Can you give us an example? Yeah. Um, Often we also come across quite often is when the couple want to set up their family trust and want to put the property into the trust. So the legal documentations, um, you know, they're similar like the last example, we can do a sale and purchase agreement to sell the property from the couple's name into their trust and also do a deed acknowledgement of debt to forgive that debt so that the property is properly, you know, gifted into the trust. 
Right. And um, I, yeah, other circumstances um, we come across is another example I can share a story with you. Is um, early this year, I've got a client come to us and say, um, Joy, can you help us to remove my wife's name from the title? And um, and I asked them, why do you want to do that? After you know more in depth discussion, I found out actually the parties are going through the separation, and they simply just you know had a sort of agreement: one person is going to take over the property. But this kind of situation, we will stop in there. We're not able to, you know, deal simply by the sale and purchase agreement. This separation need to be dealt with, in, you know, by the family lawyer through the separation agreement to document the separation of assets properly. And through that base agreement, then the lawyer, the convincing lawyer, can process the transfer. So it's very different to normal sale and purchase. So I think as clients, you need to have very clear message to your lawyer about what you are trying to do, what are you trying to achieve? And your lawyer, along with other professionals, such as Connie, the broker, you know, the bank, as well as your accountant, can ensure that you know, um, all the right documentations is in place. And um, all the tax, all the legal, all the financial you know, factors all taken into account to make sure the transfer is done properly. Great, Joyce. Thank you so much. So my takeaway is um, uh, always tell your solicitor the reason for uh, the request because uh, you might not know there's, um, you know, different documents required uh, to achieve that outcome. And also get uh, solicitor involved as early as you can uh, so that you can uh, make sure the whole thing um, happens smoothly. Uh, it's also a good idea to talk uh, your uh, finance broker like uh, Prosperity Finance because we potentially can look at the refinancing which potentially give you more cash back to cover some of the legal costs and other costs. Okay, thank you so much, Jay, and thank you so much for watching. Um, if you want to uh, get some legal advice, um, you know, personalized legal advice for your own situation or any other kind of legal advice in terms of business or property transaction or uh, family uh, matters, um, Joy and uh, the company she worked for um, has all the services that covered. Um, so please feel free to contact her. Uh, her contact details are listed in the video below. Um, and thank you again for watching and please, uh, if you're not, please subscribe to our YouTube channel because every week we have really good content waiting for you. Thank you. Bye for now. Bye, Joy. Thank you, Colleen. Thank you Bye. very much.